Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming to this presentation. And thank you, Comsol, for giving me the opportunity to present in this, in this conference. Um, so as Richard said, I am Cesar Bustos, or Cesar Bustos, however you want to say. And I am an acoustics consultant working for, for Arup. So Arup, so we are a, a firm of engineers, planners, consultants, architects, and we work in every single aspect of the built environment. So that's anything man-made um, associated with buildings and, and infrastructure. Um, so I work in the acoustics team. We sit in the technology uh, group of the company, and we work also in various aspects um, of acoustics. So for example, we work designing concert halls, music venues, cultural spaces. We work on building acoustics of offices, hospitals, educational facilities, and so on. And I work a lot on environmental acoustics, that is doing noise and vibration control, uh, pollution control, and anything to, to mitigate noise from, say, roads, railway lines, airports, industry, and so on. So that's what we do in Arab, buildings and infrastructure. Why do we want to bring Comsol into all the tools that we have in Arab? And where do we think it could be powerful in? So my experience uh, with Comsol started about 10 years ago up in Scotland, but it was working um, with the design of portable loudspeakers. And that's something that Comsol is very popular for. Um, and I was looking at very small systems um, and changing very um, small dimensions and looking at the very, very detail of something relatively small. And then we would predict the frequency response of the system and then we would skip the prototyping stage and all that. Very similar to, to what I've heard today in the acoustics presentations, which were really good, by the way. So I wanted to bring across that experience of something small, but then it's something much larger, which are buildings and, and infrastructure. It's the same science, but it's applied to a slightly different space. And also it's a different game. So in engineering, in consultancy for buildings, um, there are many, many people involved. So to get your information, you have to speak to a lot of people. Something different to when you work in a small consultancy designing one particular um, device. Um, so these are the main reasons why we decided to, to acquire Comsol for, for Arab Acoustics. Uh, first of all, it, it solves complex problems, so that's um, the obvious one. Uh, so in Arab, even though we have the experience because we have worked in so many buildings across the world, um, we can benchmark our solutions. And, um, but there are some cases where nothing similar has been done before, so it's really hard to benchmark. So we would go to Comsol to give us that, that starting point. You know, what, are, what are we going to do with this solution? Where do we even get started? So Comsol is very powerful for that. More accuracy, obviously. Um, in Arab, sometimes we, we know the answer already because of our experience. But maybe if it's a sensitive um, application, we need to know with a lot of accuracy what the answer is, what's the precise answer. So we'd, come, we'd, we'd go to Comsol to give us that extra sort of accuracy. Better understanding, so when you dive into a Comsol, and I'm, I'm sure you know about this, when you dive into a Comsol model, you really have to understand all of your inputs, what's important, how are they going to affect your outputs. And, and that's actually quite interesting because from, from before you start modeling, you have to start thinking, who do I ask for this piece of information? What's important? And finally, innovative analysis. So the post-processing module that Comsol has uh, is very powerful, and we want to share our solutions, our findings with our clients or other colleagues in an interactive way. So in consultancy, you can end up writing long reports and having long tables. But it's much better to have um, an application um, builder, for example. I went to a presentation yesterday about it, and it's wonderful how you can simplify your models and show um, it's much easier to explain um, what you're trying to do. So what I'm going to do in the next 15 minutes is to talk about various study cases um, where we've used Comsol and where we want to use Comsol more. So it's very important to point out that we are still testing Comsol, we are still investigating the software, uh, and we are comparing to what I call um, our traditional methods or traditional tools. That's because we have the experience, so we know what the answer is going to be roughly but we wouldn't rely entirely on a console model 
we always compare the results of different tools. Um, so the first study case uh, in structural acoustics is um, construction vibration. Um, so for planning purposes, um, and when before a relatively large building is constructed, very often the local authorities would require the developer to undertake a noise and vibration impact assessment to show that there are no impacts upon existing receptors nearby. So in construction, you can have problematic um, vibration levels when you work with construction piling or with demolition, and especially when you have receptors or buildings nearby. So that happens a lot in city centers, for example, areas that are very urbanized. So for construction, anything to do with airborne noise propagation, we understand very well, and there is plenty of measurements, there is plenty of, um, of standards, and we have plenty of examples, so it's easier to deal with that. But then when it comes to energy um, going into the ground, propagating through the ground, and then into a structure, then that's a bit of a gray area still. So this is our current approach, not only for construction, but for many other applications of acoustics um, at early stages or whenever there is time limitation. So first of all, you would do some research, um, you would read some articles, you check other, other projects, then you benchmark your numbers, you do some high level calculations, and then you estimate, okay, this is the answer that, that we think we're going to get. But then sometimes it's quite uncertain and the accuracy is quite limited. So COMSO can help us um, you know, understand that much better and give us that accuracy that, that, that we need. Um, these models were actually built by, uh, with the help of, of, of COMSO support. So James and Robbie and Matt, they are the true genius behind this. We, narrow, we know why this is important, but uh, we are still learning as to how to set up, set up a model from, from scratch. Um, so these models can be reused quite easily, and the process is very visual as well. So you see where you apply your energy, how it propagates, and then you can assess in your structure where precisely the problem is. And again, to explain this to a client, to an architect, or to a developer, it's much, much easier to show them, you know, whenever you have a red contour, that's where you have to mitigate or, or to think about mitigation. So it's much easier to do it with COMSOL than it is with just long reports and explanation. Another similar application is uh, vibration and groundboard noise. This is actually the reason why we wanted to get COMSOL in the first place. Uh, we then discovered that there are many more applications we can, we can use it in. So groundboard noise and groundboard vibration, that's when you have very loud sources, uh, like ventilation systems for um, underground systems, like the London Underground, so they have these massive fans. They are like 120 dB, um, and, and they are always underground, obviously or when you have um, amplified speech or amplified music, or when you have um, heavy trains passing by. So th those are very loud sources, and energy, again, it propagates through, through the ground, and then into a structure, it excites the surfaces of the structure, and then it creates what we call groundboard noise. Currently, there are tools to predict uh, this, but they are complex. They are really hard to pick up, and they are also expensive and it's really hard to pass on as well. With COMSOL, again, the process is more interactive. Again, you get to see how your energy is propagating and where, the, where you have to pay more, more attention. So with this type of models, we can answer typical questions we get. What's the best material to reduce vibration? Do we need to isolate this building or not? And these are decisions you have to make way in advance because once you start building your, 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 your building, then it's really hard to fix a problem like this. Another interesting application in environmental acoustics is the design of, um, of complex barriers. Um, so I'm sure you've seen that uh, sometimes they're alongside the roads or rails there are, there are barriers and they are there to protect uh, nearby sensitive receptors from noise of the sources. Again, there are plenty of tools out in the market to predict uh, what's the attenuation of a typical barrier, of a, of a standard barrier. And, and we use them a lot, we've tested, we believe in them, and it's something that we currently use as well. But what happens when we don't do something that is standard, when we want to do something more bespoke? What if we want to model something more detailed like this? Or we want to check, okay, how much attenuation you would actually get from one of these complex barriers? So COMSOL has been a great tool that can give us, again, that starting point. 
Interestingly enough, for this type of projects, of applications, we are using the boundary element method. We found that it's very efficient and, and it's excellent since you have large geometries. So you can imagine how tall a noise body will be for a road and the receiver might be quite far away as well. So with the BEM um, um, module, you, you can predict, again, with large geometries. Now, I'm just showing you the study cases, but obviously we, um, we, there are many challenges and many uncertainties we still have to figure out and we are still working through it. For this particular application, we found that um, the way you set up your source has quite an effect in your results. So if you want to maybe set up an omnidirectional source like a speaker, or do you want to uh, model a line source, that has quite an impact on the results and also the impedance of the ground. Good news is that Compso has many different ways you can set up your impedance. So depending on the information you have, you can use a different method. Now, building acoustics, that's something that we do a lot um, in Arab acoustics, obviously. That's to look at various elements within a room, for example, absorbers, membranes, or facade elements. Um, lip mass membranes, they are, they are interesting elements. Um, so they are basically absorbers uh, that we use to absorb energy in certain, in certain frequencies. You can sort of tune it. Um, and they are used to control remotes in small um, rooms for um, used for critical hearing or recording studios, if you will. They are well known um, and they are widely used everywhere, but their design is mainly empirical. There are some equations you can use to get started, like basic Hellman's resonators, uh, but there is a lot of trial error exercise. So there is a lot of prototyping. You build it, you test it, and then you see if it works. So we want to use Comsol to really investigate and understand what, how we can model this and how we can skip the prototyping stage. Um, since it's obviously expensive, it takes a while and it's not environmentally friendly. So we're using Comsol to investigate these type of elements. Another good example of how we use Comsol in, 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 in tools or applications that we, we use every day is uh, to work out the amount of absorption in a, in a room. This is bread and butter for an acoustics consultancy. That is to, to work out how much absorption you need in a room to improve speech intelligibility, or if it's a music venue, then how much absorption you want to make sure that music um, is perceived in a nice way, etc. We know that, plenty of tools, we understand it. But when you look into some details, there are things that you're like, mm, actually we haven't thought about it before, or there is no easy way to quantify this. So the, the height of ceiling rafts, it's, it's a good example. So depending on where you put your absorption, it would have an effect in the overall reverberation time of your room because you have absorption from the front face of the absorber, but also the energy would reflect back from the soffit into the back of the absorber, and that should have an effect. So there are no current equations that you can use to predict this, but we had a go at console and we found that the results were something uh, believable. And that's something that we want to, to use more. So this is a good example of something we use every day, but Comsol gives us that extra accuracy, extra detail. And also very interesting, we use Comsol as well to assess uh, facade elements in isolation. So when you have a complex facade with many, many elements and they are repeated, sometimes you may have some undesired effects. If you have uh, wind uh, exciting the facade or another uh, noise source, and, and we use Comsol to take one of those elements in isolation and study it and then say, okay, what's causing this undesirable effect, this resonance? Could it be the materials? Could it be the air gap in between um, the connections? Uh, so when you model this in Comsol, you get to really see where the problems could be. And finally, acoustics transmission loss. Again, this is something that we do a lot in acoustics consultancy. That is to work out um, what's the minimum uh, performance of a, of, a, of a wall, of a partition, to avoid having noise breaking in from an adjacent room. So we do this in, in markups and layouts all the time, and we understand it very well as well. Uh, plenty of tools as well. We have insul, we have struts. Uh, but we, every now and then, we get um, situations where nothing similar has been done before, especially when it's something um, with large scale, say for example, the roof of an airport, that's something that you can't really benchmark because it, we haven't worked in that many projects uh, doing that particular thing. So we use Comsol to help us the prediction of that acoustic transmission loss. Um, 
we again, this is something that we built with with, with Mats and, and, and James, and we found that there is really good correlation between measurements and, and and prediction. We also learned that you can simplify a lot your 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 models. Uh, you don't have to model the entire structure depending on the spectrum you are interested in. So if it's mid or high frequency, then you can just model. Um, the partition, apply a complex load on the back, and then predict what happens on the receiver side. Now, if you're interested in the, in the low frequency end, so for vibrations, for example, then, then we, we realize you do need to model the entire structure because the geometry starts to play a role. So those are various study cases, as I said, where we've used COMSOL. We still want to use it more, and we are still learning, uh, but these are four things that I wanted to share as well. I'm sure you know this since mo most of you are experts in, in COMSOL. But for the type of work we do, and these are the four main things I wanted to share. Um, so the models we build, they need to be as accurate as necessary. So you need accurate inputs to get accurate outputs. Uh, but you don't need all of your inputs to be that accurate. So you really have to think what's the input that is most important. In acoustic structural models, we found that damping is quite an important uh, value, a bit of a gray area that you have to um, you know, play with a little bit. Um, but we also found that there are some other parameters that we thought would change the results a lot, but in the end, they don't. Um, the models have to be uh, as realistic as appropriate. So all the models we built are essentially wrong but there is something useful about them, and that's what we use to inform, inform our clients or to work out um, our solutions. I'm sure you know about this. The models should be as simple as possible, so you don't have to model every single detail. It just might, might add uh, more computational resources, and you might not get uh, much accuracy. And finally, think about what are the most important behaviors you, you want to capture. So we found that it's very easy to misinterpret the results console gives you, uh, but that's because we don't know how to read them. So you have to make sure that you know what behavior you want to capture. Don't just build a model and try to extract many, many answers. Perhaps just, if you have one question, build one model for it. We found, for example, that um, console gives um, very perfect and ideal solutions, uh, which is correct, but then in practice, that's not what you get. So for example, with the acoustic barriers, we found that obviously depending on where you take your averages, where you work out your sound pressure level, um, it changes a lot. So you need to find ways around it um, because in reality, you wouldn't have a perfect reflection from the ground. In reality, there are other variables that would change your results. So you really have to make sure that you capture those in your, in your model. And that's pretty much what I wanted to share again, again, thanks, Gwen, for giving me the opportunity to present. Um, it's been quite an enjoyable experience. 